develop a better understanding of the wise use of credit, let's spend a few minutes with a certain individual we'll call Mr. Money. Hello, I'm Mr. Money. People can't seem to get along without me as cash or credit. Everybody knows there are many forms of credit available to consumers everywhere in our country. These young men and women are high school students preparing themselves for a successful and happy life. John Nelson will be graduating this year. Judy Naylor is a junior. John and Judy are friends of mine. They drop in to see me from time to time and we have some interesting discussions. Let's borrow them for a while. Well, here we are again. Yeah. Well, hi, Mr. Money. Hello, John. And how are you today, Judy? Just great. You remember our learning machine over there? Well, sure, that's a great gadget. What's it going to teach us today, Mr. Money? I'll turn it on and you'll see. Wow, look at all the signs. You see them every day. Sure, but they never make much sense to me. Well, they may look a little confusing. Actually, they're just advertising the many ways credit is used. By the way, John, what does credit mean to you? Oh, gosh, I don't know. Buy now and pay later, I guess. Not bad. But there's a lot more to it than that. Credit has been defined as man's confidence in man. Webster's Dictionary says credit is trust, given or received. Almost everybody in the United States uses credit in one form or another. Millions of people use credit to buy the things that add up to a better living. Well, there's sure a lot of things that I'd like to buy for better living. How about giving me a little credit? Nobody gives you credit, John. It's something you have to earn. I don't understand, Mr. Money. How can you earn credit? Well, we'll select another channel on the learning machine by remote control and see. To earn credit, first, you have to develop your character. You have to be trustworthy. Second, you have to have capacity to pay your bills. And third, you need some capital in the form of savings and other property. Scoring high on these three C's is essential to earn a good credit rating. Gee, I bet my dad scores high on the three C's. Oh, that's right, Judy. Your father has an excellent credit rating. Here's his record at the credit bureau. Why, it goes way back before I was born. Oh, yes, Judy. Your father earned and has always kept a good credit rating. Now that you know something about credit, let's bring back those signs that seem so confusing. What do you mean, seemed confusing? I still don't get it. All these signs are only advertising consumer credit. And there are two kinds. The first is non-installment credit, or single payment credit. The other kind is installment credit, which is repaid in two or more payments. Non-installment credit is usually extended for 30, 60, or 90 days, and repaid in a single lump sum. Non-installment credit is also available in stores where people buy many things on a 30-day charge account. Credit cards for travel, gasoline stations, hotels, restaurants also provide non-installment credit. Electricity, water, gas, and telephone service are furnished by utility companies on monthly credit. Dentists and doctors extend credit by billing monthly. Non-installment credit is used by people who borrow cash and repay the loans in one lump sum. In addition to using non-installment credit, consumers use installment credit. It is usually extended for a period of a few months to two or three years. There are two kinds of installment credit, installment sales credit and installment cash credit. Installment sales credit is generally used to purchase such things as furniture, automobiles, appliances, and similar products. 
Since an automobile is one of the major purchases consumers make with installment sales credit, let's see what's involved. Here's the consumer and here's the car dealer. The first thing to understand is that a legal contract spells out the agreement between the consumer and the dealer, including the number and amount of installment payments. The wise buyer makes certain he's getting good value for his money and always reads the fine print to make sure he understands all the terms of the contract before he signs it. Installment sales credit is used extensively by consumers and so is installment cash credit. Millions of people use installment cash credit when they borrow cash from consumer finance companies or small loan companies, commercial banks, and other financial institutions. Consumers use installment cash loans to pay off accumulated bills to keep their credit rating good. They use installment cash loans to pay for vacations, to pay for special education for their children, or to send them to college. And people use installment cash loans to meet unexpected emergencies. So you can see the use of installment credit is mighty important to the consumers of this country. Mr. Money, uh, my father's been making payments on our home for years. Now, is this installment credit, too? Yes, John. That's called mortgage credit. And sometimes the payments may run for as long as 25 years. Boy, I never realized people use credit in so many different ways. Well, of course, some people prefer to wait to buy the things they want until they've saved enough money to pay cash for them. However, there are many people who are able to pay cash who prefer to buy things on credit so as not to disturb their savings and investments. But, Mr. Money, doesn't it cost more to buy things on credit? Oh, yes, it does, Judy. Let us have the learning machine show us some of the factors that enter into the cost of providing credit to consumers. One of the cost factors is maintaining up-to-date credit information. Then there are bookkeeping costs, keeping up the records, and collecting payments. In addition, there is the cost of borrowed and equity capital. The price you pay for credit service depends upon such things as the type of merchandise you buy, the amount of your down payment, how long you take to complete your payments, or if you borrow cash, how long you take to pay it back, the type of security you give, and your credit rating. Now, there's another thing you both should know in order to use credit wisely. And that is how to figure the maximum amount of credit or other obligations you can safely afford. Sounds like another good job for the learning machine. Right. Let's see how you and Judy, as Mr. and Mrs. Homemaker, arrive at the amount you can safely afford to spend. When Mr. and Mrs. Homemaker figure the maximum amount of credit or other obligations they can safely afford each month, they first deduct from gross income their income taxes, Social Security, and any other deductions they make to arrive at their take-home pay or disposable income. Under disposable income expenditures, they deduct essential living costs. Their discretionary income is left. Out of discretionary income, they provide for savings, insurance, recreation, and contributions to their church. After deducting any payments they are making on any installment purchases or cash loans, let's assume they have $30 of their monthly discretionary income left. So $30 a month, that's the maximum total obligation we can safely afford to take on for new credit payments of any kind. That's right, John. Gee, Mr. Money, do girls have to learn all this about credit, too? Well, Judy, women do most of the shopping when they get married and very often spend most of the family income. Well, sure. If a guy has to work hard to earn money, well, the wife ought to learn to help get the most out of it. That's right. 
A husband and wife should plan together how the family earnings should be spent. Before they borrow cash or buy anything on installments, they should carefully figure whether the benefits of credit service are worth the extra charge. Well, you can be sure, Mr. Money, that, well, before I buy anything I need on the installment plan or borrow cash for some good reason, I'll figure out all the costs to make sure the deal's worthwhile. And so will I. Good. Oh, gee, our time's up already, Mr. Money. We can't be late for class. When will we see you again? Soon, I hope. Are you ready to go now? Goodbye, Mr. Money. And thanks a lot for helping us learn how to use credit wisely. So long. Goodbye. To benefit from the many credit services available throughout the country, every consumer should understand a wise use of credit.